to order. We're going to stand together and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, hold on. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the of the United States, 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 States of America, of America and, and to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, delay, but yeah, are we recording? We are recording and we're live. All right. Okay, Mr. Randall, we're good to go. Okay, we, we now have posted the agenda and we're going to call on our acting uh, Secretary Treasurer, Mrs. Uh, Bunting, for a roll call, please. Ms. Colucci? Here. Dr. Dinopoulos? Here. Mr. Polis? Here. Mr. Riddle? Here. Mr. Warren? Here. We move to it. item number four on our agenda, our discussion. Mr. Janafe, you're going to talk with us about two different items at this point. Okay. Um, the first one is just an update on AstroTurf. Obviously, um, the news today, just of some of our uh, folks that are out there <laughs> joining us. Um, I just did an all call this afternoon, relaying the message from the governor that schools will remain on the digital platform uh, therefore all buildings will be will remain closed um, some one of the offshoots of that will be that uh, the sports season for the spring will be canceled we did get that email just a few moments ago from the commissioner of the Ohio High School Athletic Association why that comes into play here is because the date I want to say for us to start the stadium was right around graduation day, which was the 30th or maybe the 28th of May. And uh, now we had a meeting a couple of days back with all of the representatives that they're, they're able to start as soon as we give the green light to start. So my assumption will be that w as soon as next week, we'll start to get uh, we'll start to get action at the stadium so that was the the if you scroll down um go ahead and hit that just scroll down if you watch my screen really what this was all about keep going um uh, is that we were able to purchase go ahead and purchase these items so that we're ready for it um keep going that's just the screen and those sorts of things Keep going. Um, I'll give an example. Keep going. Can you guys see our screen as well? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. Keep going. Right there. So, like for instance, we had to order that box. It's a electronic box. So, uh, essentially, they're going to come underneath the the track, bore underneath the track, so that we can have electric on the side that we we have the trailer to do all of the timing. Right now, we're running a wire over the track every time we have a track meet. This way, we can just pull up the trailer, which is at the finish line, plug it in, we're ready to go. And this is a box that allows that equipment to, to be housed, if you will. So we needed to purchase that. The next one is the long jump. Uh, we purchased that. That's obviously all the long jump, high jump, all those sorts of things will all be new. This is the... Um, the tracker board, the what you, you kind of plunge off of to jump off into the pit. So we ordered those. So this was bit really just the, the equipment, that paint, uh, beige sort of thing. You can see how it looks on the track, but that's the drainage system that we added in both D zones, as you know, both D zones where the band plays and where we do the high jump all of that grass is going to be removed so that we no longer have to bring equipment around over the track to cut the lawn, take all the clippings off the field. All of that is going to be removed. So it's going to be all the asphalt and the rubber from the track. This material is uh, set on the edge of the D zones all around the perimeter so that we can obviously take the water away from uh, so it doesn't set on that uh, now new asphalt of the D zones. 
And so we ordered those just so that we can prepare in case that we uh, we can get a head start. We're, we're ready to go. So I assume in the next week or so, as I said, that we would get started with with the facilities. Um, and we're going to we're going to man all of that from the uh, east side of the stadium. So the equipment, all of that will either be on the east side or down below the locker room coming up from the south side, if you will, of the stadium. Any questions on that? No, um, I do have one. So the okay. track will be closed from potentially next week until the start of football season. Correct. Okay. Yeah, the whole it'll be. You'll see before too long. It'll be a total uh, construction zone. When, when you talk about, especially when they get their equipment onto the field, when they start tearing that field up, because they got to bring in the huge equipment to pull off. All, they got to pull all that. I think it's eight or nine inches of rubber that mm -hmm. was originally on that field. So there's going to be a lot of equipment moving around. A lot of quite frankly, unsafe. It's a construction zone. So we want to make sure that everybody will be, um, will understand that. Well, obviously once it starts, we'll do an all call. We'll do a, another press release, those sorts of things, notifying our community that this is happening. Mr. Janifay, I have a question concerning the contractors that are doing the construction work for water uh, right now on the corner there. Yes, have the have there been communication between the contractors you know that the stadium work may be starting soon um no uh with those people on the corner quite frankly if it wasn't for the rain that we have had they would have been long gone they're they're almost gone you can see them in the morning they're only in there to move that those water lines they move the uh, hydrant out on the dobbins corner there uh, once they're out of there, then then they should have been gone a lot. When I talked to the guys when they started, they were going to be a week to 10 days, and, and I think they're now on week three. So at some point in time, I'll absolutely, absolutely go over there and have that conversation. But I would suspect it would be greater um, congestion, if you will, the next phase of that where they're actually widening, widening uh, Dobbins Road. Okay, thank you very much. You're, you're welcome. Um, just a real simple COVID update. As I said, um, we sent an email out today notifying our, our uh, educational community that we will uh, will no longer be going into the traditional setting. I, I want you all to know, and I know you were, you're there as well. Um, we're all heartbroken over this. Um, Obviously, there's nothing that we can do, but we are heartbroken that um, that uh, we're going to have to somehow find a way to to recognize our seniors as well. That it's not uh, going as way the way that we need it, uh, but we're, we're going to have to do what we can. Uh, we're we're trying to identify some opportunities through all of these challenges and uh, hopefully we're able to continue doing that as we move forward but uh, we our staff again we, we've done what I would consider a, a remarkable job uh, I continue to get all this weekend looking at artwork from third graders through eighth graders I hope you're getting those if you're not, I could forward them as well. Most of them are going on, pulling to everyone, but <coughs> um, it's just phenomenal work that's being done. And uh, we're very proud of it. Also, knowing that uh, we're all working, meaning the OPSI people, they're all working different hours, different parts of their job being compensated um, for the work that they're doing. We have bus drivers. Uh, cleaning out, if you will, Dobbins so that we can prepare for the roof to be replaced. We've got obviously cafeteria workers uh, preparing the food and uh, being here for for pickup, curbside pickup. Mr. Zura is delivering 
all of the food that can't be that the folks cannot be uh, cannot get here to to pick up. So Mr. Zur is the delivery man. Even he's going out and meeting with our folks and making sure that our students have what they need in regards to nutrition. So when the governor kept schools open as essential businesses, um, we're we're still open for business. We're we certainly are on a smaller footprint. Our teachers, I, I will say, are working as hard as they ever have to provide for this new, it's new for them, it's new for our students, it's new for our parents. Uh, we're all in this together and we're doing a remarkable job and we're, we, we just can't pat all of the folks on the back enough to be where we are and to provide what I would consider as a, a, uh, a rigorous, prepared education and uh, that I'm, I'm very proud of. I know the administrators continue to meet with the staff and they're very proud of it as well. And I hope you're hearing the same. <coughs> Mr. Jennifer, I'd like to give a shout out to your, your tech team. They have done a remarkable job in, in my opinion. They've helped me grow and learn new technology, learn new things. They've been receptive. They, I just think that uh, we're very, very, very uh, fortunate, and I, I'm under the impression that our teaching staff is <coughs> learning new techniques every day, also as well as our students. So, a little shout out to the folks that work the technical department. Thank you very much. Well, <clears throat> just on a side note, as you know, Janet, Mark, and I are in here in the office and and janet yesterday afternoon reached out to all of us very concerned about this um what do you call it where they they call it the zoom bombing zoom bombing where they come into meet people come into meetings and say things do things show things that are very inappropriate and and all day long yesterday jp and mo and nadim which I think are second to none in regards to our tech department and kudos to our board for continuing to allow all of them to be in the capacities that they are helping our to they're they're talking to again students parents teachers all day long and obviously the case I'm talking about yesterday all weekend long ensuring that this meeting will go without a hiccup and uh I know it's early, we just started it, but I'm thinking we're gonna be okay for tonight. That's so great. thanks for those comments. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from the board members? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Larry. Uh, so we'll move to agenda number five. And Mr. Janafe, if you continue to take the sure. microphone. All right, so um, Allerton Hill, you know we've talked a number of times. We actually met again via Zoom this past weekend, we met with Jennifer Economist, um, and I asked her to provide us, if you go, don't skip the proposal, okay. uh, I asked her to provide us some Facebook pieces, and she gave us Ontario schools. I just wanted, she thought it was would be interesting to share this with you, that once we get up and running, whether it's her or the other one, the Kidder, Kidder one, um, once we get up that the Facebook, the entire social um, communication piece gets started. Not now, I mean, at the bottom. Not now. What's that? Say that again. Never mind now. We can't get, there you go. Yeah, we don't, we can't. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just okay. not now. There you go. Yep. Um, so this is just an idea of what she was sending out. This is what they do. Um, they post, they answer, they provide this information. I just wanted to give you an example of which one would look, each one would look like. I don't know what all of you are on, but I know our folks are on all of these social media. So you got Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and just different messaging and how it works with this particular school district. In this case, um, she thought Ontario schools was very similar to us. Matter of fact, I, I do think they're a peer district of ours. 
um, for, for many different reasons. Um, so this would give us an idea of what kind of work that they'd be looking at. You could see over there to the right, I also kind of thought that was kind of cool, that you could see what's trending, how many hits that they've done, all those things that people that use this type of communication are very familiar with. But for me, you know, the followers and how many followers and tweets and retweets and all those sorts of things. Um, so she said, as soon as we're ready to go, she's ready to go. I reached out to the, um, to the other gentleman as well, uh, from, uh, uh, Kidder. And I asked him to do the same thing. And you can see Connaughton Valley, interesting enough. That's where Janet's sister is the treasure. No. So <clears throat> this is real time. <clears throat> what they did a little different approach. If you could see this shot here is that his Troy had shared with us that they're more or less they're their first and foremost is they want to provide the news, uh, the newsletter from the newsletter. They put a Q is it a QE or a QU um, QR code QR code so that then once they hit a QR code on your cell phone, then that take flips them right to the social media part. So they start with the uh, newsletter, which they're recommending for a year. And then from that point, you start hitting the different uh, social media pieces. Now, the funding or the invoicing uh, mechanism is different from both. I've provided you what the Allerton is. This is a little bit different. I do have the um, um, the contract from Kidder. I didn't put it in here because I just received it this morning, but I have it for you to look at. Essentially, we're in the same ballpark uh, financially committed wise. One of the things I feel a little bit more, I feel stronger on the Allerton proposal is that um, Jennifer graduated for, even though she lives in Columbus and is working with some of the top performing schools in Ohio, in the suburbs of Columbus, as you all know, um, she's got that feel and flavor of the Columbus suburbs and she's a Boardman Spartan, but her parents lived in Poland. So she has that connection to the Valley and what the Valley represents to not only ourselves, but also across the state. So I think that adds a little bit different of a nuance than Troy Kidder, who is out of the Northeast part of Indiana. Um, as you can see, they worked from my email. They were working in 600 school districts across the country. Um, he shared with me, many of them he hasn't even had meetings with. He's had email communications back and forth with how they were going to provide information, um, which is well and good. Um, I just think we get a little bit different approach knowing that the representative, if this is again, something that we've all been committed to, you guys understand that commitment. You guys know what we're talking about uh, as far as the investment. And quite frankly, both of them said, point blank with us three in the room. You, we obviously have a contract, but at any point in time, you're not happy with our contract, give us 30 days and you can get out of it. Mm -hmm. Both of them said, because both of them were very confident in what the what they could provide um, for the Poland schools. We also, as you know, we have Julie Bursick, who I explained this um, to the guys last week. Um, Obviously, Julie's coming out of the reporting area from the news media. Um, so there's information and reporting of that information. And I think this would, this would allow us to have a comprehensive with whether it's Allerton or Kidder. I'm, I'm leading more towards Allerton and using Julie as the liaison. As you know, she's working with five school districts. She's doing a wonderful job in the videoing and the production of those videos. But 
how it goes to um, what I would say um, branding, if you will, branding what you your your district is all about and promoting what your district is all about. Again, not branding and promoting to recruit because we know that we can't, but we certainly can brand it in regards to what we are offering, what we are offering our own student being branding our own community with what's going on in their schools, as well as being informative of such. So I think it's a, a more of a comprehensive build to, to uh, communication. Uh, 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 Mr. Zura, if you would, could you tell me how much of our public has joined us tonight? What, where are we stand with our stakeholders? We'll get back to you because Mo's got that at the other end and he's in a different office. So we'll get that to you and we'll get it right back to you. I'm showing 26. Well, one of the things that's so important to me Good. Uh, as a school board member now, uh, 28 months is initially the expense of this. And yet I have thought it through and thought it through and thought it through and talked to uh, Mr. Warren and talk with the other school board members and talked with Mr. Janafe and Mrs. Montine. And I thought Mr. Janafe's comments about our branding it is, and as I see it for the benefit of our stakeholders, I think we're talking about a $50,000 a year investment. And I would just rather be out there with that than to be somebody finding out about that six months down the road and say, what the heck's the matter with that Poland school board? Why would they want to spend $50,000 a year? I see it as compliance is so validly important. And then when we talk about branding, we are now in a competitive situation throughout the state of Ohio, particularly when it comes to conversations about school choice. So the, the uh, investment that we make in that is very, very important. To me, this is a very, very big decision. I wonder if any of my other board colleagues have any comment or two cents to add? Personally, I like the whole idea. We won't have any compliance issues. We shouldn't lose. It takes less pressure off the district. I'm all for the Allerton proposal or the um, Mr. Uh, Kidler's proposal. However, I do agree with David. I think that we should keep it someone local. She's from Boardman. Her parents lived in Poland. Give the business to someone from here. I'm all for that. And I like the fact that they've spoken to their clients. I don't like the fact that Kidler has several school districts they've never reached out to. I, that turns me off personally from them. Anyone else with a comment, Mr. Warren, Ms. Colucci, or Dr. Donopoulos? Yeah, Greg, I, I I have a comment here, an observation, and and you know you look at the number that you just quoted, it it, it looks like a high number, and it is a high number, uh, but when you uh, juxtapose that against uh, uh, and calculate that as a percentage of our investment in this community, and that would come in terms of uh, salaries uh, that we pay plus the capital value of what the school district owns. Uh, it's it's an infinitesimal percentage that we're spending to tell our story to the public. Uh, and, and so I've always looked at it in terms of what's your capital expenditure and, and what is your value and what percentage of that are you using to tell your story in a sense. And I haven't calculated that number, but I, I'm sure it's not a very high percentage. Well, th thank you very much, Mr. Warren. Okay, Mr. Janafe, we'll move on. Um, I've got a comment. I'll play devil's advocate here. Uh, I think it's a high number. And I, I hearken back to the day of Ken Ekus with the $30,000 and the grief we took for that. And he was responsible for, for our facilities. And we got so much grief over that. We're going to get grief over this $54,000. Um, I'm not saying that it's not something we should do, but I think we should explore the ability do it in-house for a less expensive amount of money. Um, I'm sure there's 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 people in the in the district that may may be willing to to do this for 
less money. I'm sure if you asked Pat Williams, if he wanted to do it for $30,000, he would. <laughs> um, but I think it's something that we should at least explore before we make a decision on it. There, there's another side of that too, Larry. And that is that if you get a plan from a company like Kidder or Allen Allerton, uh, and you have them kind of show you the way, uh, you can back off on uh, what you're paying them to do as you're able to do it in house. Uh, but you uh, have the goal set for you and the process set for you by a, a, a guy or a gal who built their house and sent their kids to college doing it. And in my mind, there's no, no uh, uh, substitute for that. Uh, and, and I know we have a great deal of talent within the school district, both in the professional staff uh, and in residents who live here. And I, I think that might be something we could transition to, but I think it's really important to get started in the right direction. And in my mind, it's worth, worth the investment. Uh, and that's just an observation from a guy that was, was in schoolwork and, and has been there and seen that. Well, let me, let me just comment as well as so that and, and reiterate what he just said is that, you know, the first, investment or however long this takes. I mean, obviously they're going to try to do a, a, a good enough job where we continue this down the road. I will say this, I, I, this can't, I, I believe in what Larry just said that we've got to build the capacity of, uh, we say this all the time We things that are going on just this last two and a half months. I mean, uh, we've got to build the capacity of our folks or an individual or different individuals throughout the district um, inside as well as out to be able to provide us. And I'm, I'm certain the initial investment is based on doing such an initial scope of the, of the work. Once you get going and doing this and having things established, my guess is that the volume or scope is reduced, I'm guessing. Um, you know, how we post, who gets posed, who, how many phone calls you got to make, how many emails you got to have, how many posts on all three areas that we're looking at. My guess is once we build our own internal capacity, that the scope is reduced in regards to getting it off and getting it started. Um, so uh, again, I, it is, it is an, uh, uh, an initial investment, but I also know that, that, um, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's always two sides of it. And it seems like, you know, we get people to say, you know, I know, I didn't know we were doing that or why didn't we know we were doing that? You know, I sent out when I do an all call, like I did today, there's 6,000 approximately 6,500 contacts that I just made this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying they're individual people. What I am saying is that there's, you know, grandma that wants to know or grandpa or people that have been on their all call that want to continue or like the board members who just want to stay on. So there's six over 6,500 contacts that were made today and we're still not, we're, it's still not enough. So again, I just want to make sure that, uh, that you all know that we have done we're, we're, we continue to vet, I should say, continue to vet what um, you all asked in regards to the action that you took moving the Bulldogs' future forward. I just well, to no, really excuse me. Oh, Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I actually agree with Dr. Donopoulos. I do think the amount is a little bit steep, and I do think we should be looking at all options first before making any commitment. Um, but if there's no other options, I do think that the Allerton Hill option is great because, as David said, it does have that. Jennifer Economist does have those local connections. Well, I really appreciate the comments from the board. I want our stakeholders to understand that we are working very hard to try to communicate these things to the public and try to prevent those criticisms that come as to, you know, why do these people make these choices? These are not easy decisions for any of us to make. And, and it's not that the decision has been made, but we're here to vet these things yeah. and to try to 
move this district ahead. And as these new things evolve, I think they're very important to explore. So uh, I would like to move on to agenda number, Greg, item number on. six. One, one. Greg, can I back and make one, one other comment with regard to that? I think we have to look too at our, our, our population. I mean, on the Allerton proposal, you've got Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You know, I don't know what the, I don't know what the, what the population of Poland is, but it's certainly much older. And the people that we want to reach out to are, are more so are the people that don't have kids in school because the people that have kids in school are going to know what's going on. I can tell you that the 60 and 55 year old people aren't on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So even though that that's, that's an important part of the communication process, it doesn't target the people that don't have the kids in school. Yeah. Something you, 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 you've got to look at other options to get to them. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, yeah. yeah. And, and I don't see that in the Allerton proposal. So, uh, I mean, that's something that we need to we need to talk about too. I mean, if we had a young population, it's okay. But, I mean, I'm 57. I'm never on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. So, just something else to think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good port, doctor. I appreciate that very much. Yeah, we're trying to see if they. Were you going to show so something there, Mr. Janafe? No, we were just look, pulling it up, what, what Doc was talking about, the proposal. Can, can we move along to uh, yeah, sure. our facilities updates, agenda number six, item number six? Yes, sir. So we posted this on Friday. Um, you, I sent all of you the uh, job description. Uh, we gave it till the end of the month. Um, and uh, be happy to answer any questions you have in regards to the uh, this this position. I will say that that position um, back in the day, from my understanding, was filled um, back in the I want to say '90s that there was a, uh, a this type of position for the district. So if you guys have any questions on the, on the, uh, have you had any applicants yet? One. I got it yesterday. Okay. Where was this posted to the district website? We have, it'll be on the district website, three count. It's, uh, on Trumbull, Mahoney and Columbiana. Also it is on a state website. I'm not sure if it's, uh, uh, BASA or uh, uh, OSBA, but do you know which one it is? I'm not sure. It's it's on a state website as well, uh, Mr. Polis. Okay, thank you, sir. Three counties, our web, our our uh, web, and uh, the state. You you've already brought to our attention some uh, about Dobbins and the stadium. Do you have anything more to add? about uh, yeah, those, I, those facilities? Yeah, yes, just one real quick on Dobbins because because there's there's activity over there. And, and, and obviously, when people drive by, not only is there activity at Dobbins, you've got all that corner activity. And, and, and we've gotten word that we're opening up the building again for students and those just, just all kinds of information. But we want to make sure that we're clear uh, through our communication that uh, yes, corner the corner work is not our work. That's county work, um, and I think county and state, if you will. It's a, a line, isn't it? Well, it's walk to widen the, yeah. the turning to put a turning lane in. They're doing the the changing the water lines, but uh, and then the work that the progress that's happening over at Dobbins right now, we're abating all of the rooms so that we're going to occupy. So we're when I say abating, there's small nine by nine tiles in the in the classroom and the gymnasium half the gymnasium's done they're over there as we speak today started work on abating the rest of the gymnasium what that allows us to do is put a new floor down to get rid of that tile so that we can have that and open that up for um you know youth youth activities for our students um varsity workouts for our students, um, adult walking track that we have intended on putting over there. 
Um, so there's a lot of things that we're doing, but first and foremost, we want to make sure that that abating piece is done. It's all safe, but, and it's, you know, as long as it's encapsulated, everything's great. But when we put down new carpet, we don't want to put down carpet on, on material that we know that we no longer are going to be able to see if it's broke or, or uncapsulated. So we're just going to abate it and pull it out of there. So that's what, that's the work that's going to, that's being done right now. And here within a week or so, you'll, you will take action on a new, uh, with Tima for the new roof. So you'll have people working on the roof as well as inside the building. Okay. Regarding the stadium real quick. So when do you expect that to be completed by? Did you hear the question, Mr. Janifay? Yes, sir. I'm trying to put the time frame. So I'm looking at, I believe, uh, Mr. Polis, that the, I'm just looking at my calendar real quick. I believe the start date was the 20, the original start date mm -hmm. was the 28th of, of May. Okay. So if the original start date was 28th of May, they were going to turn it over to us, I believe on the 7th of August. Okay. So now with, let's just assume best case scenario that it's May 1st. That's four weeks ahead of what we were anticipating on doing, right? So I'm just, again, weather permitting and all those sorts of things. I'm guessing that we would be in the range of the middle of July if we could, if we could get started at the beginning of May. All right. Are we keeping that closed until the first football game? Um, not if, I guess, not if, uh, not if we can open it up. All right. So the community will be allowed on the track and field before the first football game, because I know back when they first installed it, the point was to leave it and close until the first football game was played. We will not be doing that. Well, I, I, I understand what you're saying. And I, and I'm guessing the, um, all of the hoopla as far as, how what everything was done and the commitment from the community and all those would was exactly. trying to quote unquote make it special i'm guessing back mm -hmm. in the day that happened I, I i mean i i i'm gonna be very excited about the stadium and the new turf and the 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 track for our students but also i i know that i i think the the newness quote unquote of that being provided has kind of i would assume worn off my hope is to get that available for our kids as soon as possible. I mean, okay. you know, we've got soccer, obviously, um, fall activities that are going on, band that's going to have, uh, um, you know, uh, marching their uh, camp, you know, assuming that there's no changes from today's announcement that we start school on time. My guess is that, or my hope is that we would have that available for students as and and community as soon as possible perfect thank you sir you're welcome and then down there on uh concrete patchwork we're talking if you haven't noticed if you've been to the high school we got all of the uh potholes filled again i will say with the uh thank you very much i will say with the um concrete the sidewalks are part of the Forging the Bulldog future was to take care of driveways, sidewalks, all of those sorts of things. Um, we're getting, we're getting, uh, we've already got quotes and went through the quote work at the, at the middle school. Uh, I would suspect that that gets started here within, I mean, obviously it's a, it's the, one of the great opportunities that we have during this time is that we can get some of this work done. Um, now when when students aren't here so this is an opportunity that we want to seize that would include sidewalks at both uh the middle school part of mckinley um absolutely at the high school on the north side as well as the south side it will allow us also to to start the tennis courts 
putting the drainage around the perimeter because as we know part of what our issues are at the high school between the stadium and the high school is the drainage um so that our hopes and desires is that we would see this work happening um this summer yet so there's nothing nothing saying that we can't do the work of the stadium at the same time we're doing the drainage at the same time we're doing the tennis courts at the same time we're doing the concrete all of those things that we all know that that are a part of that plan would be moving forward our 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 my hope and desire is that we're able to communicate that clearly and efficiency and efficiently with our uh, community to let them know that this was all a part of that plan that you just reaffirmed at last last month's board meeting. Regarding the patchwork being done at the middle school, are we doing anything in um, this bleachers, the stands? I know some concrete, we have some issues over there. Is that being taken care of or no? Oh, yes, that's a great question, uh, Mr. Polis. A part of the concrete work of the sidewalks is that in the stadium, there's, um, I want to say, like eight specific um, uh, levels where the the steps and part of the bleachers have kind of eroded away. Yes, sir. That stuff, I, I don't want to mislead anybody, uh, uh, but what, all of that stuff would be repaired when we do the front. It's the same contractor that's doing the sidewalks in the front. Um, uh, but I don't want to mislead anybody. Uh, it, we're not doing a whole lot to Baird Mitchell Stadium. We want to repair it. We want to make it safe. We want to make it, uh, you know, we want to make it presentable, if you will. Uh, but we're not spending a lot of money um, re repairing, uh, long-term fixing it, if you will. But well, thank you very much. Your your comment about communication. Uh, I was I wanted to address my comment to Mr. Warren. We had a board meeting and you were appointed uh, communications liaison for the board with uh, kind of the strategic planning committees. Mm -hmm. Would you be kind enough to reach out to the facilities committee and uh, make sure they heard some of these things? I have no idea whether they're paying attention tonight. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would love it if uh, if they had a comment that they could put, uh, tune into us, you know, next Monday, or at least you could give us some feedback that you sure. tried to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, fair to my other board colleagues? Yes, sir. Yeah. Dr. Donopoulos? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Okay. And then uh, we'll go to agenda number seven, our academics. Mr. Janafe? So um, obviously you've already heard me talk about the uh, teaching and learning with our staff. I, again, I can't talk enough about, I'm just so proud and uh, they, they, they deserve all the accolades in regards to providing. Remember, this wasn't something that they prepared for quickly. Um, they, they did a fantastic job, but I would also say that if you would hit that that plan there, go ahead and draw that up. That our current we we in the Poland School District, um, our current board policy does not allow for um, that type of learning to take place. Back in the day, there was a political piece, and I don't want to go through the whole story, but there were some schools that had over 17 days. There were 17 calamity days uh, uh, one year, uh, Northwest Ohio and Southeast Ohio, if you can believe it, were crazily affected by the snow. And there was a push for the these districts to get the legislation to quote unquote, excuse those days. And the legislation said, absolutely not. We're not gonna do that. We will give you an opportunity and that, that's what spawned the blizzard bag. So they gave three days that if you wanted to do some sort of a packet where you could pass out materials, students would do it at home and bring them back in and schools would do with what they did with that. 
Um, we, we've never done that. We didn't have that here at the school. This, the new law, which was uh, um, House Bill 1, what was it, 147, I think, um, allows school districts to now make sure and ensure that their board policy, oh wait, their House Bill 197, that their board policies allow and permit for this new digital platform learning. So you all have that. You're going to take action on that next week as an emergency uh, addendum to our policy. And this once once you do this, then then we do also some of the other things that we've been discussing with our teachers in regards to evaluations um, and those sorts of things uh, to allow for for this new law for us to do these things that the students are doing right now. And it aligns with ODE law, I'm sorry, with ODE policy, board policy, and state law. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much. And again, our, our teachers are, uh, I mean, our teachers are just been doing fantastic. Terrific. Um, any comments from the board? Then we'll move to uh, agenda number eight and turn the discussion over to our treasurer, Janet Munteen. Uh, the first thing I have on there, just to talk about uh, with everything going on, a lot there's a lot of talk obviously about interest rates. So I reached out to Joe Murphy, um, Dr. Janopoulos and Mr. Riddle, you know, you're aware you were on board when we last fall when we did refunding of all of the district's debt, um, quite a process that was finalized. We have three new board members, which I've brought you up to speed and you're aware of that. Uh, mm -hmm. But what I wanted what I wanted to make you aware of is I reach out, can you just go ahead and pull that document up? I reach out to uh, Jill Murphy at Huntington um, and a couple things. So just to kind of recap, what we did, we consolidated all of our debt and we got a 2.65 fixed rate and it was for 10 years. At that time, um, obviously that was an excellent rate and the conversation at that time was, did we want to get a high, pay a higher rate um, and not have a, a prepayment penalty or do we want to do the 2.65 and put language in there? Um, at that time, um, hindsight's 2020, who would have ever known that we'd be going through what we're going through today? But um, the gist of it is the plans were at that time that um, we really didn't feel that there was any way that we would have the opportunity, per se, to pay off that note before 2022, 24, or 26. So that's why there is a pre-penalty payment currently in place. And then as you can see there, after May 1 of 26, we could pay that loan off without penalty. So when I reach out to her, uh, truth be known that really with everything going on, the current rates are only about 20 basis points lower than what we currently ha have. Um, and she said that's because the public and private marketplace, as you can see there, um, are pricing high due to the lack of buyers at this time. So regardless, we, we don't, we can't <laughs> because uh, of the way the contract is written that we can't pay it off early. And uh, if, if we were uh, to be able to do that, you can see that we would be paying $137,000 in penalty uh, plus legal expenses and the only difference in the interest from what we currently have at 2.65 to what we could get is only around 51,000. I'm just bringing this to your attention so you can see that we did explore um, the option with everything going on uh, to see if it's something we could or couldn't do. So I'm I'm really happy that um, we did what we did when we did it um, and that we're at that 2.65. And then you see, you know, if the opportunity arises down the road that uh, we, we would have the option to pay that off early um, and we could explore that at that time. Did you have any questions on that? I, I wanted to thank you. I, I had a, a comment and I'm sh sure that we'll continue to watch things as things unfold. And uh, we're, we're confident in the communication process with Huntington, you know, occasionally from a 
competitive standpoint as the months unfold. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they do a loan modification that, that doesn't come with a great deal of expense. So I just appreciate very much the communication to our, our well, and members and to the stakeholders out there. And thank you very, very, very much for putting this out here. And now we've made it a public record. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, so the next thing on there, um, this is going to be, again, due to COVID-19, um, things are changing every day, lots of emails, lots of correspondence. So on the board agenda next week, um, you'll be approving um, this Section 125 Flexible uh, Benefit Plan Amendment. And what this is, as a result of COVID-19, um, basically the Section 125, so everybody's aware, is where um, our employees are getting the portion that they pay to healthcare on a pre-tax basis. However, the Poland Schools also um, has a flexible spending account and a dependent care for our employees. Well, when the with COVID and all of the CARES Act, um, obviously they're trying to create relief for people. And basically we're gonna amend, um, Anna, you're probably, very, Mrs. Cl Ms. Colucci, you're probably very familiar uh, uh, due, due to your profession, but basically this amendment, and you'll see that I already had to sign and date the document because it had to be um, executed by a certain date. I'm just having you formally approve it next week so you can see and we'll have that on file. What it's doing is it's going to give um, people who participate in the flex spending and the dependent care, it's probably going to allow them monies that they haven't spent yet in those accounts. It's probably going to extend it out. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of other things that weren't, quote, flexible spending eligible that they're probably going to add to that list for, for people who have those. So this is just a document um, new that um, is a uh, amendment is required due to um, the COVID-19. Any questions on that? None from me, thank you. Did we lose doc? We'll just pause for a second. I feel like we've lost a... I, I, I've lost your video, the audio is fine. Okay. okay. We'll just take a minute here and try to get that back. I lost mine, but I'm back now. Okay. I'm good yeah. right here. I have no issues. I see Doc. I see Larry. I see Greg. Oh, Scratch that. I lost everybody now. <laughs> <laughs> My screen's black. Okay. Yeah, that's what I've had the last few minutes here. With, with that said, I learned in um, our... Uh, <coughs> kind of our, our executive session to prepare for tonight that if these um, computers want to do an update, the fact that we don't use them every single solitary day, Windows wants to do an automatic update. And if they're updating during these meetings, it can shut it down. And so we'll have to begin the practice of updating the Windows software prior to our meetings. All right, Dr. Opolis, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm good. All right, I'm back. All right. Okay. Perfect. Why, uh, why can't I see him? I don't know why we can't see Doc. You can't see me? Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. No. We my can picture, hear? My picture's frozen, but... Uh... Okay. Yeah. Well, we can go on as long as they can yeah, hear us. Ahead. As long as you can hear. Okay. We'll still work to get you all back on, okay? Okay. Yeah, I can hear. We still can't see, but go ahead. Go all right. Ahead. How about you, Larry? Okay. So, the next thing. So, the next item on there, um, just so you're aware, is the Poland schools. If you want to click on that document real quick, and then I'll let you work on. Yeah. So, this is a... Um, this resolution will be on the board agenda next week and it is basically um saying that we were awarded i believe it's around 20 there's a document if you scroll down twenty seven thousand eighty dollars and 21 cents uh it's 
it's uh, money that we're going to be able to get to put towards our school bus purchase. Um, you're aware and you've already take board action that we are going through Ohio School Council. That bidding hasn't been done yet, but we, we've given them the authorization to participate in that. And it's, a, it's in the um, five-year forecast in Forging the Bulldog Future to purchase two buses. You'll see there that the VIN number of that particular bus, because one of the requirements in order to get this money, this grant money, is you had to be replacing one bus that's part of your daily route. That VIN number is one of the buses that is part of our daily route. So the way this will work is um, after you, Hello. you'll see the um, all of the things that we have to comply with. Troy's locked by the house. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So what will happen as soon as we um, do this resolution and then the bidding actually takes place? I gotta, do you want me to wait? Yeah, give me one second. I got to unlock so Troy can get back in because we locked it. All right, one second. Okay, I got to go down here. Okay, security. Let's see if I can get Troy back in. Troy back in. All right, I'm back. All right. Um, I need to lock it again. Okay, hold on. I'm going to lock it back up so we can't, we don't have. Un uninvited guests, sorry. All right. I had to change computers. Mine decided to run an update and the whole thing shut off. Wow. That's, what those that's, are what, doing. that's what it's doing. Yeah. So we've got to figure that out. Good call there, Mr. Uh, Real. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to lock it back up so we can't, we don't have un uninvited guests, sorry. All right. I had to change computers. Mine decided to run an update and the whole thing shut off. Wow. That's, what, those that's, are what, doing. that's what it's doing. Yeah. Good call there, Mr. Uh, Real. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can you hear me now? I can yep. hear you. Do we? Can have you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yep. Is Doc still on? Yeah, I'm on. Just okay. Can't okay. So I'm not sure where I left off um, when that happened. I was talking about the money we're getting through a grant through this for the school bus. My understanding is the way it will work. Um, is we'll purchase the buses. I'll file all this paperwork and then I'll submit proof that we paid and that we are getting rid of one on the road and then uh, we'll receive that 27000 So this document is necessary um, and it will be on the board agenda uh, next week for you to approve. Any questions on that? And, and the last thing, um, just to let you know, is the resolutions will be on. It's time to renew our um, uh, workers' comp uh, for next year, 2021. Um, those documents are there. The cost is the same. We pay $500 to comp management and $500 to Tartan Benefits. Um, we've, we've made great strides in reducing our workers' comp uh, rates through various things. Uh, we're taking advantage of every possible avenue there is to get uh, the discounts that a district can get. Um, so it's that time of the year. This is just standard. We do it this time of the year because I believe it has to be filed uh, by the end of, um, it has to be filed by the end of May. So if we don't do it in April, I believe, I believe the deadline is around mid-May. So that's why we'll be approving uh, for 2021 um, who's going to uh, take care of our workers' comp documents for us. These are just um, the summary. And then the last thing uh, that I included just because we're talking about workers' comp is, again, part of what we're, our country's going through. Um, and the Bureau of Workers' Comp um, is very stable. Um, they're going to be giving, um, I think it's the other document. 
the the first one or yeah i don't know what this amount's going to be be yet i don't think any district does but uh due to the pandemic and like i said the the bureau is very very stable that um monies will be going to all districts um to help to help in the aid of what what everyone's going through and this just was released last week and like i said when i get that i will share with you uh what we, what we are getting we have gotten monies in the past obviously not due to the pandemic uh but this is this was just released last week and since i had it on the work session to tell you we were going to be renewing for next year i thought it would be a good time to let you know that um we're also going to be getting some dollars uh due to covid 19 from the bureau and, and that uh, janet that's essentially sort of like a refund on premiums we paid or yes. something like that yes okay, okay. yep and that's that's why i don't know the amount at this time and yeah. i think all districts get a different percentage because obviously we all pay different premiums mm -hmm. so and uh, that janet, was i had a question with, with all the communication that comes in and out between you and mr janifei and the office there have you heard anything about how Ohio teachers and or school employees have been affected by COVID-19, that we have uh, many reports of sickness with uh, school employees? I have I not. Haven't heard, I haven't heard of any. I have not. Well, that's, that's a very good, good thing. I know that there's, you know, just a lot of turmoil when it comes to the isolation and the shutdown in the economy and, it's uh, one one sample that, that that part of it has worked out fine. And, and sometimes we think about what these workers' compensation rates could be if we had epidemic sickness with our employees and teachers. I mean, it would it right. would really make a, a substantial difference. The, the other uh, thing I wanted to comment uh, <coughs> was I used the word. Uh, executive session and and i apologize uh, to the stakeholders out there the the board policy is is that the board president and the superintendent can meet with the administration to plan these work sessions and school board meetings when i referred to this we've set this up to be 8 30 a.m on thursdays before the school board meeting so I apologize in the way I phrased that, but that's what that was all about. We get together twice a month and we may not have to get together twice every month, but at least once a month to plan these meetings and plan the agenda. And I want to personally thank Mr. Janafe and Mrs. Montine and Mr. Zura and others who have participated in those planning meetings. They mean a lot to me and we're working very hard to not only document this agenda, but to invite people to participate in these meetings so that we do have communication with our stakeholders. Uh, do I have any comments in closing uh, this agenda from Mr. Warren, Mrs. Ms. Colucci, Mr. Polis, or Dr. Donopoulos? No, no, I have none. And agenda number nine says, uh, it's recommended that we enter into executive session to consider the appointment employment dismissal of a public employee or official and uh, when we do that there will you know we will not be conducting any formal type of business and we will not be reconvening this particular meeting so now at this time i need a motion to adjourn our work session on motion uh mr riddle thank you mr polis and a second please i'll second thank you miss colucci we just need a verbal all those in favor Aye. Aye. Well, and thank you to our stakeholders who have joined us tonight. We'll look forward to this again next Monday night. And uh, thank you very much.